Travel and home. Amazing team. This reversal symposium, I will be discussing about metabolic syndrome. Can we have slides, please? So, uh, very important aspect of uh, reversal of anti conditions is the primordial prevention. While we are this community in our MBBS days, one of the things we want to prevent even before the risk factors are occurring, primordial prevention is the ideal one. But we know our lifestyle is very, very difficult now. We will be discussing a few of the points here for metabolic syndrome. There are no conflicts of interest for this uh, talk. What about definition? I have collected two definitions. Just take your uh, focus. What includes in metabolic syndrome and why we want to target them? All of these definitions. Take the WHO definition. Resistance. There's two of the first. Obesity, fertilicide, low HDL, high blood pressure, high FBS, microalbuminol. The WHO definition. Similarly, you can take ATP definition where two out of uh, sorry three or more of the criteria are required. Again, the same thing: abdominal obesity, hypertriglyceridemia, low HDL, high BP, high FP. Even if you take IDF, take central obesity as the core uh, criteria, and you take any of the two following. Similarly, raised triglyceride, low HDL, high blood pressure, and raised FBG. There are multiple synonyms for uh, metabolic syndrome, you no, know, in resistance syndrome, metabolic syndrome X, or this metabolic syndrome, or multiple metabolic syndrome. Even we have ICD core for uh, this condition. Why it is required? Why we are discussing reversal of metabolic syndrome? Some is that actually hasn't been diagnosed in the patient. Why it is required? Because obesity, metabolic syndrome, and type two diabetes, cardiovascular disease, all are correlated together. And once there is resistance is obesity, metabolic syndrome, and diabetes, which are on its own have two to four times more risk of cardiovascular disease, and this is where all our, our patients are going to die. So ultimately, we want to give our patient complication-free and long-term healthy survival by preventing cardiovascular disease. And our today's lifestyle, there is increasing obesity, starting from the school-going children also. See, the Indian data is alarmingly high. Similarly, see the obesity prevalence is increasing worldwide, men and women also. And the global prevalence of obesity is going to be uh, reached by 1 billion. See the number billion, it's not million, it's billion by 2030. And among adults, 764 million people will live in obesity. And <coughs> ultimately, what will happen once there is a you know, tremendous increase in obesity, risk of coronary artery disease? And that will also precede the onset of type 2 diabetes. If you see, uh, you know, very, very famous and uh, well-known study, Nurses Health Study, where occurrence of CVD, coronary artery disease and stroke, is said even 15 years before the type 2 diagnosis. Type 2 diabetes has been diagnosed very, very late, but you can see the prevalence of coronary artery disease and stroke starts 15 years before the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes. So your risk increases very, very early, even if you have not got type 2 diabetes. And <coughs> see the metabolic syndrome patient, you can see cardiovascular disease and all cause mortalities are is in both men with metabolic syndrome. And both coronary artery disease mortality, mort mortality and all cause mortalities are increased. Even if you see hypertension, metabolic syndrome was an independent predictor for both cardiac and cerebrovascular disease. What about NASH? Very importantly, going to have a, a, a second a big uh, epidemic of NASH and fatty liver disease. And there is, has been strong positive correlation between resistance and serious TATOC and metabolic syndromes constantly correlated with a grade of the fatty liver insulin. Higher the parameters of metabolic syndrome, higher the fatty infiltration of liver. So it is reversible? Yes, uh, definitely. And very important thing is the treatment of component risk factor, very, very straightforward. For each and every factor, modif risk factor is very straightforward. And 
it is very very cheap very important thing as compared to going to treat your patient type 2 diabetes mi and stroke so it is very very effective very very straightforward and most importantly cost effective for your patients see the long term outcomes what can be the treatment consideration yes lifestyle is very very important diet physical activity there has been some propose about the surgical consideration for bariatric surgeries also and there can be treatment of obstructive sleep apnea also if it is a part of the obesity complications there has been proposed pharmacological therapy i'm sure you all are aware about the um, many diabetes prevention trials also we need to correct ldl levels also we need to have triglyceride treatment again very controversial thing do we treat triglyceride or not to treat hyperglycemia treatment yes very important and ultimately we want to prevent cardiovascular disease for our patient so why it is important so i am sure you must be knowing about this upstream and downstream treatment of uh, especially type 2 diabetes and complications so i have taken this slide here just to men mention the importance of weight centric approach or the upstream intervention so this is a stream of river and we want to target the upstream only where obesity and adiposity as uh, the core of the pathophysiology and the, the these factors or sorry the complications are many many much downstream in downstream hypertension coronary artery disease type 2 diabetes obstructive sleep apnea nash osteoarthritis and dyslipidemia are going to be there we don't want our patient to go there have complication and then to treat this is the routine downstream intervention what we all follow in our opd what we want to use upstream approach where we have an opportunity where intervening the upstream to address the physiological physiological drivers of type 2 diabetes in obesity very very important we want to address in the beginning only and we have so many evidences also if you see the oslo diet and exercise study very beautiful study uh, well conducted study where a combined diet and exercise intervention reverses the metabolic syndrome and you can see at the end of one year more than 67% study participation were not having metabolic syndrome they were out of metabolic syndrome at the end of one year with combined diet and exercise similarly there are many studies for diet also there are lots and lots of studies due to limitation of time we will be skipping but a very simple and direct study with metabolic syndrome was the time restricted uh, evidence with metabolic syndrome where patient were fed it for 10 hours 14 hour of fasting was done and this is just an example but all the calorie deficient diet they work for this thing uh, <clears throat> then time restricted eating intervention improves both cardio metabolic health for patient metabolic syndrome and lifestyle intervention that can be added to under medical practice metabolic syndrome and it was a single evidence but there are so many studies for any dietary intervention that helps <clears throat> so management for metabolic syndrome should be targeted at treating the condition contributing to the metabolic syndrome possibly reversing the risk factor we want to reverse the risk factors so we want to manage the underlying risk factor and part is the weight reduction for all of our patient and see this is a slide for type 2 diabetes but this is true for all metabolic complications where if you get 5 to 15% of weight loss beneficial for metabolic improvement metabolic for uh, improvement for <coughs> cardio metabolic risk also has a disease modifying effect we have seen reversal also of type 2 diabetes also and very importantly it improves the quality of life of our for patient for this abdominal obesity is our target weight reduction should be priority where we want to reduce abdominal obesity and metabolic syndrome so usual recommendation aim uh, is a decline of 7 to 10% from majority of the guidelines uh, 7 to 10% of weight loss for baseline total body weight during the period of initial one year and this will definitely require a reduction in the calorie intake by 500 to 1000 calorie lifestyle is again stress and going to be a very very important and our all doctors also all the today's population where physical activity but and physical inactivity going up and up and that is where the prevalence of metabolic syndrome is increasing day by day so <clears throat> burden of today's lifestyle is physical inactivity and the mobiles and technologies going hand in hand 
destroy our good lifestyle. Mobile phone is now not a simple communication device. You can see, my point of view, they are the physical activity. See the guy here, and this is occurring in each and every household, including our home. And physical in uh, inactivity, when we want to increase the physical activity to assist in weight, redu weight reduction, beneficial effects has also been found on all the metabolic risk factors, and it importantly reduces the atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk. And there are so many recommendations, but majority of them calls for the 30 minutes of moderate intensity exercise, such as brisk walking and all days of the week. And when the young and uh, where we want to promote more weight loss, six more is required. What about food? Yes, we are going to uh, hold, have this conference in indoor, and I'm sure majority of you have visited or going planning to visit in the next couple of days to very delicious areas of the city. And the you know, bitter reality is fast food and stress. There is a vicious cycle that increased prevalence of overweight and obesity day by day. So trends are going towards fast food, and that's why we are also going to Sarafa Bazaar and you now Chappan Dukan, and ultimately we'll be increasing our chances of metabolic syndrome. So <clears throat> we want to reduce atherogenic and diabetogenic diet. So beyond weight control, okay, what we want from diet reduction in the total calories, as I've told, 500 to 1,000 calories uh, reduced diet from daily reduction. The diet should be low in saturated fats, trans fats, cholesterol, low in sodium, and very low in simple sugars. Very high carbohydrate intake, very high uh, simple sugars intake can exacerbate also dyslipidemia. In addition, there should be ample of intake of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, which we don't like actually. <clears throat> How does this help? Healthy diet in metabolic syndrome. No, they improve the adiponectin level and reduce the inflammatory marker and the positive the healthy diet positively affects the pro-inflammatory milieu and it improves insulin sensitivity and improves endothelial function and ultimately it helps in reversal of metabolic syndrome type 2 diabetes and heart disease what about dyslipidemia part of this uh, metabolic syndrome ldl is our primary target here As i told the triglyceride controversy going up and even the recent one of the trial for new fibrate has failed to show on cardiovascular disease uh, benefits but ldl is still remain your main target and you know, after the proper history taking and analysis patients should consult for lifestyle changes in smoking weight loss is again key here diet and exercise is again key here for ldl cholesterol what about blood pressure whenever it is mild for definition of metabolic syndrome Mild elevation can often be effectively controlled with just lifestyle therapies like weight control, again, physical activity, alcohol moderation, sodium reduction, again, very, very crucial, and increase in the consumption of fat fruit, vegetables, and low fat dairy products according to the test diet. So, if you see the recommendation for uh, major hypertension guidelines, there are, there are so many recommendations, uh, but the crux is uh, we will. Uh, uh, take into the you know, very short time. See the ACC AHA guideline, it promotes the half of the exercise aerobic exercise, half of the dynamic resistant exercise, and it also says you can do isometric exercise like Hendrick manure, okay, for very short period of time. They are similar for uh, European guidelines, but European says the effect of isometric exercise is less well studied. But overall, half of the exercise aerobic, half of the dynamic resistant exercise, the key for all, and around 300 minutes per week of exercise is required for hypertension guidelines. For nutrition also, these are the same recommendation what we already discussed. Body weight management is, the goal is to reach the ideal body weight. And for Indians, we have to go below the EMI of 23. That is very, very crucial, not 25. So, <clears throat> the crux, body weight reduction helps in blood pressure also. To use 2 to 4 kg body weight, the systolic blood pressure decline will be around to 8 millimeter of mercury what about fasting blood sugar level the part of metabolic syndrome yes weight reduction physical activity again and both will delay or prevent the onset of type 2 diabetes and for exercise we have ada guidelines also right we i'm sure you are we all are aware about the ada guidelines uh, for 150 milligram a minute per week or more of moderate to vigorous 
intensive activity again the word key word is moderate just act for 150 uh, minutes a week and no more than two consecutive days without activity so for this three days conference i am sure you'll be doing exercise not skipping for more than two days shorter duration okay once the patient is younger patient and more physically fit individuals are there we can have a shorter duration of vigorous intensity exercise also and very important aspect we all forget to counsel our patient we just tend ke go itna minute itna minute chal lena kar lena but forget about the non exercise physical activity also again very crucial for individuals with diabetes and again pre diabetes as a part of metabolic syndrome always always uh, advise our patient and encourage to increase their total daily incidental activity or non exercise physical activity going gain the additional health benefit just ask them to walk every 30 minutes and uh, no do stairs and other activities between not just uh, no the total amount of period you have given to your patient so non exercise physical activity during the day time during on calls during the parking area also we need to improve them and there has been linear relationship between body weight reduction and glycemic control 1 kg reduction will ultimately reduce around 0.1% of a1c and we know uh, there are so many this is going on for reversal of type 2 diabetes or similarly for uh, i've just kept this slide for pre diabetes or impaired fasting glucose so so many trials for remission rate but main trial where highest grade of certainty is for the diet program with total dietary replacement with up to 4% some reversion or the remission rate has been there for type 2 diabetes and patient uh, hb1c becomes less than 6.5% this is again very important thing and so dr akansha is going to speak next for reversal of type 2 diabetes and she will discuss another uh, very good article if you want to read about metabolic syndrome recommendation circulation journal where american heart association and national heart lung and blood institute have and this statement for therapeutic goals recommendation for metabolic syndrome so it's a very good paper and uh, they have covered all the aspect but again the same thing they are repeating here but if you want to go for one article you can read this very good article where abdominal obesity we need to again reduce 7 to 10% of weight during the first year and we should also promote or continue weight loss thereafter to extend possible to reach the bmi target for our patient 23 for india again same for physical activity again same for atherogenic diet we need to be focusing this for elevated blood pressure if it says it is more than 120 80 initial choices are no when we need to maintain the healthy lifestyle okay weight control physical activity alcohol moderation again very important for high blood pressure sodium re reduction emphasis on increased consumption of fresh fruit vegetables and low fat dairy products but if your patient blood pressure pressure is consistent to more than 140 80 or for high risk patients like diabetes and chronic kidney disease as tolerated we should start a uh, bp lowering medications also uh, to achieve the goal also for blood sugar level again for irg we the our primary target is to save progression to type 2 diabetes and if for patient with diabetes we need to uh, for target less than 7 there are so many diet Uh, as i discussed earlier but uh, but <coughs> this is a very important slide for probable benefits or the improvements in the metabolic syndrome so due to lack of time i will be skipping but these are very well known well planned diet and we have now tremendous amount of evidence is generated around this various diet and clearly we can see with the mediterranean diet reduces the cvd incidence it reduces the blood pressure also it improves the mortality benefits and there is improvement in dyslipidemia and reduces in the type 2 diabetes also similarly for dash diet we all know for the significant reduction of blood pressure and is recommended for all cardiac guidelines and its reduction in the bmi cardio metabolic profile and type 2 diabetes incidence is also improved there are plant based diets also available there are very low calorie ketogenic diet again a very controversial uh, thing but thing here is the calorie loss and weight reduction is key here where every diet helps there are so many diets available uh, but they have much more benefits to give to your patient last part uh, medications and 
surgery for any condition which has not been developed okay like metabolic syndrome is pre pre of everything so it is very controversial but metformin and a carbo have been documented to prevent the progression of pre diabetes diabetes very important aspect glitazone spioglitazone have shown in iris trial in stroke prevention more than 50% reduction in the type 2 diabetes risk also and gastric bypass again an effective uh, for reversal of metabolic syndrome but it is expensive and there are so many uh, no uh, benefits associated with but so many controversies and uh, quality of life issues post bariatric surgery is also tips i am skipping due to lack of time dr akansha will be discussing the tips and thank you thank you dr